But ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gate for Scratch. And today we're going to talk about something very cool. And it's something called behavior trees. And I've actually showed you this in other examples in the past, various different game engines. Today I'm going to show you an implementation of behavior trees inside of the Godot game engine using a plugin called Behave. Now, Behave actually comes to you from a fellow YouTuber, a fellow by the name of Bitbrain. If you want to go ahead and check out his channel, I'll actually show you a video he has on this subject throughout this video later on. This is an MIT project for Godot, uh, implemented pretty much entirely in GDO. Script, no idea what the 2% of other is, probably text files or something to that effect. It is MIT licensed, completely free. It is also available in the uh Godot asset library if you want to go ahead and check it out. So it is a powerful add-on for the Godot engine that enables you to create robust AI systems using behavior trees. With Behave, you can easily design complex NPC behaviors, building challenging boss battles, and create other advanced setups with ease. Using behavior trees, Behave makes it simple to create highly adaptive AIs that respond to changes in the game world and overcome unexpected obstacles. Obstacles. Now, whether you are a beginner or experienced developer, Behave is the perfect tool to take your game AI to the next level. So we're going to see an example of this in action, probably the easiest way to explain it is a behavior tree is what it says on the tin. It, it is a tree-like data structure of branching options, often to control things like behaviors, things like AI structures and so on. Now in the world of Godot, this is actually being implemented using a node tree. So picture this, this is the root of the tree right here, this behavior tree. And then underneath it, you have things like a composite. This has all of the different behaviors inside of it. And then you have two different sequences. These sequences have conditions and actions. We'll come back and show you all of that in a minute, but the easiest way to show this one is to actually see it running. Now, the cool thing about this guy is there is a tree, um, behavior tree debugger while your game is running. So you can visualize how your AI is performing. Now, this is a super simple example. We have this sprite with this behavior tree attached, and we have this sprite with this behavior tree attached. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the debugger over here, go down here to behave, and you're gonna notice this visual debugger has two options. So we can see the behavior tree tree, or we can see the other tree there. We'll go ahead and select behavior tree. That is the tree controlling this B right here. And now let's go get our project up. And as we run around, when the logic or the conditions are true, you're gonna see, boom, which sequence is running. So right now uh, it is modulating and then we're gonna have another, I actually forget what the conditions are to trigger them. So go ahead, we'll move this out. There you see, and now the other sequence is running and it's all based off of logic. So this is a visual way of organizing your artificial intelligence or other behavioral type things using a tree of structures. And you're gonna notice this uh, visual debugger right here. It is using the exact same hierarchy that you're seeing here. It's just, this is using a Godot style. So you see at the top, we have the behavior tree. Below that, we have the composite with all the various different options in it. So there are there is your composites. Uh, there you then have your branches. So your branch can go uh, the one way, so the sequence composite number two would come down here, for example, and then that has conditions of, has negative position, so you can see right there, and then what to do if that condition is true. So uh, it's a tree, but it's organized, kind of think of it turned 90 degrees because of the node structure in Godot. So that is kind of like the, the top level of what it's like. The nice thing again here is there is this um, visual display. So you can actually see at runtime how your AI logic is working. So now let's look at how this is actually implemented. So again, like I said, at the top of each tree, so we got two different behavior trees here. They're attached to typical Godot objects. So our sprite here has this tree attached to it. It is composed uh, and this node doesn't really do anything other than contains things. It's got two sequences. Now this sequence here will run on this condition. This condition, we'll see right here if we check it, this is based off of condition leaf and it has positive position. So it's either gonna be a success or a failure. In the event of a success, it will continue down the hierarchy here and then run this. By the way, you could keep having more and more and more of these chained together. So what you're going to have basically is this sequence will check to see if this is true. If this is true, it will do this. Then it will carry on to this sequence, check to see if this is true. And if it is, it will do this. Otherwise, it will do this. And that is essentially how the trees are constructed. I'm gonna show you a more advanced example so you can see how it work in a real game in just a second. Um, but yeah, that is basically it. So you've got your conditions over here. And then the other thing here is if your condition is set true, then you have your actions. So this is an action leaf. And the other one again was a condition leaf. So condition leaf determines if something will happen or not. And then after that in the sequence, so again, like in the flow of processes here, this comes after, if this is true, 
this will action this action will happen and then you see implementing actions it's just straightforward gd script so it's a way of organizing your game logic into uh, these visually represented things and then you could basically have this could execute regardless like so this could be any true or false statement here and this could be any chunk of code in afterwards so you could have various different other actions that you just drag in and use from another project the cool thing with this project is there is another example this is an older example from Godot uh, 3.x now the problem with this particular one is that this actual project let me just go back to the, the base scene uses these assets and unfortunately they're all broken so if you go ahead and run this in order to get this project working again you would have to recreate all of the um the graphic links which is why i'm not showing you a great example but what you're seeing here is these guys are running off and they're gathering wood when they got enough wood they will then go and put it into storage and then once they're done that they will go back to their home again you would have to recreate this entire project because it depends on some third party uh graphics pack which is kind of annoying uh so i'm just mostly using this as an example because it shows you a more real world game so you've got this various different bits of logic here so you've got uh for example the villagers the lumberjack has a lumberjack AI. So the thing controlling what the lumberjack does is this AI over here. Now go ahead and open this one up. And then what you're gonna see is the lumberjack AI is actually just entirely composed of a behavior tree. So you see at the top here, you've got your behavior root. And then we've got, again, a condition. And this one here is wait for trees. And once again, any one of these you can click into and see uh, the logic behind it. So there are the various different leaves. So here you've got uh, has no free space and you can see uh what's going on here so it has free stash space condition leave uh has grown tree condition leave and then if it's the condition of so you're either waiting for trees to occur and that is the logic to determine if trees should um be cut down and then once they are you then come into this logic over here and you see it's got a variety of different actions leave the house walk to the thing chop down the tree so if you wanted to add another one of these reusable components you could literally just drag it in so i think this is actually organized so that uh, all of the AI actions like here are, are all in sequence here. So if you wanted to bring another one in, walk to house, you could drop it in here uh, and make it work accordingly. So that's the cool thing with the way these behavior trees are set up. You do have uh, these reusable hierarchies and that's how this entire structure's gone. So the forester has its own setup of behavior trees. Again, waiting for trees and then a different sequence of actions. But you can see here, often it's using the same base action, things like leave the house. Uh, it's the same logic for leaving the house and it could just be reused easily. And you see how simple an action leaf is. It's something that is done. It has a tick function, which is called every single uh, frame. The other thing you're gonna notice here is something called blackboards. Uh, these are passed in. So every single one of these action leaves has the actor it is attached to, which is the top level sprite. And then the blackboard, which is a way of sharing data uh, between the different nodes. Let's see if I can find an example of the blackboard right here. But it's basically just a shared data structure uh, between the various different uh, behavior trees in the setup. So the way they're doing this in Behave is a little bit different than what you see with a lot of behavior trees, uh, but it, it ultimately does result in a traditional looking tree. So if you're interested in checking this one out, uh, it is um, an open source project, once again, MIT licensed. I will have all the relevant links linked down below. If you like what he's done, give him a star. Again, he is a fellow YouTuber, so he does have materials out there. The other nice thing is it has documentation for how all of these various different things work, how the debugger works and so on. There's also a performance monitor built in to make sure that your behavior trees are, you know, behaving, <laughs> pun not intended, uh, testing built in there as well. So if you want, there is documentation of everything that you are working on here uh, and examples to walk through. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier on, this is what that project should look like. And hopefully at some point in time, he updates and releases a version uh, for Godot 4.x using the same particular logic, because. Uh, it's a, it's a cool demo that he's done. Unfortunately, this is for Godot 3 only, and he depended, he made it so that you needed to download this third-party um, project to get things set up, and then it used different file names and all that, so it's way too much of a pain in the butt to get this actual demo up and going, but you can actually see in this, like, what the behavior should be like. So when the guy comes out, grabs the wood, and all the stuff that the logic we just saw there for gathering wood, putting it together, um, cutting down trees, planting trees, etc. all the behaviors are being shown in this particular YouTube video. So if you wanna go ahead and learn more about how they work, this is probably the place to go. Just know that the included project, it's gonna require a whole lot of manual labor to get it up and going. That project is available here, by the way, uh, Bitbrain's Godot Tutorials project. It is this one under behavior trees. Unfortunately, again, it's three years out of date and it depends 
depends on a project that isn't, um, or a graphics pack that uh, isn't included with it and use different file names. So getting it up and running is a bit of a challenge, which is a bit unfortunate. By the way, there is also uh, this tutorial out there uh, that walks you through uh, what the various different things do, how to set it up, how to get going, how things work. So if you're interested, this is available as well. So there is a text tutorial to get you up and going with this. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Behave and a behavior tree implementation done entirely with GDScript for Godot, MIT license. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.